This is the B Shifter Podcast. John Vance, Nick Brunacini, Terry Garrison. In the house. And they are in my house. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 were, we were watching uh, old uh, Dana Carvey on Saturday Night Live uh-huh. when he was playing Carcinio Hall. They melded Arsenio Hall and Johnny Carson into one person. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And, and he, he was coming out like Arsenio, but he was also Johnny yeah. Carson. So he's like, Joan Inbury is in my house. <laughs> Ed, when, when someone's here, they call it being in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie D. Cordova is in my house. Somebody used to imitate uh, Arsenio Hall. And and they 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 had like finger extensions where their fingers were twelve inches long. Chris Rock did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and, and they looked like, like little snakes. Yeah, yeah. He'd yeah. Go on like yeah. this, and, and, he, and his finger was this long. Yeah, yeah. this is too long. Yeah. It was unnatural. Yeah, well, that's our without senior. naming names, I know a fire chief built like that. <laughs> really, really long fingers. Yeah, he had giant hands. Okay, I'll tell you who he is. He's sure. a nice guy. He's not a bad guy. I just didn't want to insult him. But in reality, that's kind of a compliment. Uh, McDonald, Willie. Willie had the largest hands of any. Have you ever shook hands with Willie McDonald? He was a fire chief in Scottsdale. No. Uh, 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 My God, his he had like, they were the huge. You would shake his hand and they would wrap around your hand twice. Wow. Nice man. Very nice man. Good dresser. Greg Tominski, who uh, teaches yeah. with us, he's got ham hawks for hands. Yeah. You know, and uh, that man is a uh, was like one of the top level uh, skeet shooters that ever lived. Who? Tominsky? Tominsky? Really? Can you see that guy's b- mitts? Like, like uh, uh, yeah, a double barreled uh, Bellini? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, he's talking about shotguns that uh, most people cannot afford. The wow. hundreds of thousands of dollars. The I, I did not know that. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Carcinio. <laughs> Carcinio Vance. Yeah. You want to talk about guys with small hands or just move on? Let's just move okay, on. Let's just move on. We're done. Yeah, we're done talking about hands. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. of the small handed yeah, yeah. people yeah. just got named to cabinets. So yeah, like, exactly. we were not yeah, go there. yeah there's, uh, there's no future <laughs> no, in any no. of it. Yeah. No. Um, no politics here. You know what? This is Thanksgiving week. We want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. This episode will be out over Thanksgiving week. So. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully, yes. uh, if you're not able to enjoy it with your family and you're working, you're going to be able to enjoy it with your brothers and sisters at work. Yeah. I always like working on holidays. I mean, I, I didn't really, especially Thanksgiving. I didn't really mind it. I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I liked it, too. And for a long time, I was single. And uh, I would go to a fire station. I said, "Who wants to go home? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm filling in." And I'd just fill in for some somebody because I was kind of a lonely single guy for a while. And some guy would go, "Really? I'll go home." People I liked, I knew where to go. Yeah. And I'd just show up, and I had the great, the best times. And you don't get a lot of calls on Thanksgiving. That's another nice thing about it. And you eat really well, mm-hmm. and you can sleep really comfortably. Right, Nick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it and at the time it kept you away from your family too. If you, if you have a family, oh babe, I'm sorry, I got got to work. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Not, gonna, not gonna make it to the in laws this year. I I guess I should just shut up because I'm I, I got you know you were mandated right? Oh yeah, oh yeah 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 I was mandated. But one thing I never did. Just we're talking about Thanksgiving. Thank goodness to all the people that bring pies and cookies mm. and stuff to the fire station, but I don't eat the foods of people that I don't know because they may have cats. Mm. Lemon know. Terrace. That's it, dude. We worked, we worked at the, uh, North deputy, which was at station 30 and, uh, not, not maybe a quarter mile away on the same major Boulevard we were on was a nursing home. And every holiday season they would, uh, Enlist all the residents to make the public safety firefighter heroes uh, big goods. <laughs> and you're right. You would find hair and teeth yeah, and, oh, and uh, like silverware and, and egg shells. And, and I mean, they would bring like a truck. Of, yeah. And there would be like literally hundreds of yeah, dozens eat, of cookies there. and stuff like that. And we would... After a year or two, we figured out this is, I mean, this is all lottery kind of baked goods. And uh, we used to give it to the cops. The cops would take it. So the uh, the cops, and cops would come in and stop and say, hey, man, you got any of the cookies from the, oh, uh, oh, we sure do. And they're like shopping carting them out to their cars. (laughs) Yeah, take it. 
So even the cops, after a while, were on to it and stopped. It's like a scene from Christmas Vacation when he, the, the dog peed on the sandwiches. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, you don't know what the uh, hygiene and no. yeah, uh, standards well, are in people's and, kitchens. And, and like at least 10% of them is like they would use salt instead of sugar. Mm-hmm. And, and so, I mean, it was well, just the whole thing was like. I'm confused by that. And you're like, you know, I bet most of your residents probably didn't do a lot of baking when they were younger. Mm-hmm. And so now it's more of a just the thing you do. You know, you got to. I don't know if this is the best use of their time. The limited time they have left. Mm-hmm. It, really. I mean, that. <clears throat> yeah. Dangerous. You don't go to a nursing home to start a new job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, that was a rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I love working Thanksgiving. You're going to see people bleed to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A Yuletide. The whole city's on fire. I don't like turduckins either. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just, okay, we can stop that. Yeah. Well, well, I always default back to my brother and I almost burned my our parents' house down. That was my yeah. favorite story. Yeah. 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 You know, that one had the most legs of any of them we've ever yeah. done. And it's just, yeah, okay. 12-year-old boys. You think, all right. We'll revisit that uh, Christmas week. We should. I think we should start burning shit, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, we got a yeah. parking lot now. Yeah. There's there's nothing. St- just a, a, a thing of trees. We have a fire truck. You can put it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to pump the sprinkler connection with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From inside the building. <laughs> See, Shane, we pulled up and we hooked up. Yeah, that's it, baby. We got a, a, a coup 150 on the gauge. Yeah, that can get up to 150, right? Oh, the whole day long. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah we get it to 300 PSI. Mm-hmm. Start oozing out of the joint connections right. in the pipe. Well. When it comes down to it, we know we can. Yeah. That would be good. Well, John, yeah. I, I commend you for trying to make a nice Thanksgiving message <laughs> on the front end of this. Yeah. We yeah, tore it all the shit, exactly. but it was a nice yeah. try. Yeah. I have a feeling this is going to be severely edited I at some point. Yeah. 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 Or not. It's or just, not. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just put it out there. We haven't named names so far. Uh, uh, we'll get to that, yeah. though. <laughs> I'll name yeah. names. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Today, I wanted to talk about an article that uh, Terry did last month, and it was the eight no-brainer strategies from the man who wrote the book on command, leadership, and NICE, and it received a lot of very positive feedback, so we'll attach that article to this episode, and I just wanted to talk about some of those eight no-brainer tips that you uh, talked about in that article, and maybe we can expand on a few of them and see how, how far we go here. Are you looking at Cliff hour. Notes? I was trying to see. Are you gonna, so, so here's the deal. I, I thought he was texting his girlfriend. No, you know, I was looking at, I was looking at the, the, the eight because, so, you know, Nick and I, we say over and over again that we're curators, right? That we, I didn't create those eight, that that list of eight. Well, we moved birth- on from curators. Now we're distillers. We're distillers because yeah. that that's worse for you. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not doing museums. We're yeah. doing distilleries. Yeah, yeah. we're doing distilleries. Yeah. So we're dealing with high octane. Yeah. So those those eight shots, shot glasses that you got. Today, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, work. the eight syringes of leadership. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I hadn't. You get you told me we we're going to talk about this about an hour ago, and thank you for that because I was able to go back and look back look at that article again. But uh, you know, once again, that's from no brainer management. Bruno put the put that out, and all I did was was really that was a cut and paste. I can't take any credit for that article. There's a couple little stories I said in there regarding a shift commander, but Bruno did a great job with that. You're looking at me funny. What's I'm going, going back on? and forth. No. Oh, what are you doing? I'm engaging. No. Oh, <laughs> because oh, usually he's rolling his eyes and stroking his beard. and <laughs> Exactly. Oh, my wife my wife sat me down and scolded me. She says, what are you doing there? You look like a crazy person. I thought, well, who knows better than you? Well, hold it. So who's crazy? Your wife watches this? Mm-hmm. That oh don't yeah. tell her uh, ding 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah hi honey <laughs> my wife has no she doesn't know what I'm doing right now yeah, yeah she doesn't care anyway odd what yeah so eight we got eight of them want to mention the first one let's talk about it well the first one is control yourself and and, <laughs> it, and it's the angels and the demons and I I went to a class that Bruno was talking about this and uh, mm. you you didn't dig deep into it on the article. 
But it, the lack of regard, when people have a lack of regard for one another, yeah. that starts to bring the demons out, which I always think about that. It's like, oh, that guy kind of blew me off. Now I don't like him. Or, or they're not, you know, they're showing you disrespect. And then that brings the demons out instead of the, the angels. So talk, let's talk about angels and demons. Yeah, so, um, and he does go into that a lot. And we'll go into that a lot during our, our program with our Silverback Leadership Program. But in an article, you know, it's just kind of an introduction to that. But those angels and demons, he does a really good job of describing. There's, there's I think, eight to ten pages where he describes the different types of angels and demons. And, and, and I guess the important key to that is that we all have them. Like nobody's perfect. Bruno had demons, and he would acknowledge that. We all have angels and demons, and the key is to identify yours. Like, I know what my pet peeves are, right? And I know what pisses me off um, as a demon, right? So you got to kind of watch those. I mean, Nick's going crazy today. Nick, you can disengage if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Nick's making me laugh today. He, Bruno does a great job in our program at ident- identifying the angels and demons. And we're going to talk more about that during the program. But in that article, I just kind of introduced it because we need to understand that everybody has demons. We do. Everybody has angels. And we all do. Yeah. Every day it's a struggle. I remember, and they're different based on the level that you occupy within the organization. They should be at least. Right. I mean, that's just professionalism. Right. So let's just stick to that. So when we were young firefighters, we had task level demons. Right. So you would work like at the station I was working at that like an A shifter was working AWR for one of the B shifters. Well, you would start talking about like activity during the day and kind of the routine of the company. And so like if you get a fire, if it's on whoever side the fire's on is going to be the nozzle person. Gotcha. And then the other side, if we lay a line, is the hose, the plug person. Right. Well, the A shifter, well, no, 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 I'm the nozzle person because, you know, let's just admit it that I am kind of the, the better at that than the rest of you. Oh, okay, great. You get to be the nozzle person. So we would get to a fire. You, <coughs> if you had a fire, it was great. And there was about a 20% chance that was going to happen, so you were good to go. So the demons come when you get to the fire. And now we're all rushing to get our bottle on so we can get the nozzle. Well, the A shifter loses his gloves because we throw him under the truck, right? So we get the nozzle, we get everything loaded, and now he's whining behind us. And he's like, you really want the nozzle? Yeah, I do. So you give it to him. Well, now he's between the nozzle and the rest of us, the B shifters. Oh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> what we called that back then, the demon in us, is he was a heat shield. So we would pick him up and we would use him just in that way and we would help manipulate the nozzle. And so it and usually they were on a cycle. So their 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 joints were small, but they're they were puffy everywhere else. And so they would be kicking and screaming and yelling and stop burning up. Like, yeah, you are, man. I'm burning my ass right now, and it, but we're gonna keep doing it for a little while. So those are the demons that you would have to eventually uh mm. control for you to become mobile into the organization. You couldn't keep blowing shit up. They wouldn't promote you. Yeah, there's posi- – so that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. So there's positional demons, right? Yeah, At exactly. Position. But then there's the ones that carry all the way through. Like that guy had an ego yeah. demon, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we all got a bit of an ego oh, demon. Oh, exactly, yeah. But mm-hmm. is, an ego demon isn't that – critical when you're a firefighter because other firefighters will manage that but when you become a chief officer or even a supervisor that ego demon that guy can get you in loads of trouble well and he can't and it's uncomfortable for the people that you expose the demon to because they don't like it your your ego demon and then there's a huge uh deficit that it creates for the user is they're always going to be at a disadvantage because people just don't like them and that's what Bruno did so well is so he wouldn't talk specifically about you as a person. He would kind of break you down a little bit and say, you have angels and demons. And here's what the demon is, is here's what your actions are being caused because of this part, this characteristic. Because he would find good and I think, everybody, which we all probably should try to. But he was better at it than I am. So he could look at somebody and kind of separate the bad behavior. <laughs> probably when you were a kid, he probably had to do that every once in a while, right? Had to see, he could separate the bad behavior from the good behavior and then mm-hmm. try to improve that bad behavior. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but 
When he had to do that with us, it was mostly when we were in our task level developmental phases. Right. And that started in high school, when, like when your right. dad has to pick you up from jail and things like that. So <laughs> I like to call those learning experiences. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, it, you know, so it kind of gets you off on a rocky start sometimes, but you can overcome and improve. So like an example of like a tactical level demon or your personal behaviors that get you in trouble. And we both had a mutual... Uh, officer we worked with and he had a problem drinking and he would go out and he would get in fights and he was a big beautiful man and, yeah. and so it and he but he wasn't a good fighter so like he would always get whooped and it would end up <clears throat> that he would end up getting arrested in this and then it created issues and i remember my old man saying russell you can't do this anymore and if you get if it happens again i'm gonna have to fire you and so he like he was the captain and he demoted him and then good for like a year and they just re-promoted him. And it, I remember it pissed off everybody on the captain's list because, you know, one less person was going to get, right. well, and they said, well, no, one of us is going to get promoted now because you put him back. And they're like, well, if he wouldn't have got taken off, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. So you guys can't, it, it, you don't yeah. have so many positions just because you, you took can't this. lose what you never had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so control your demons because you're starting to piss off the fire chief now. Yeah. So anyway, but there's an example, JV, of, of like good leadership that believed in second chance management, who a guy was getting in trouble for a different set of behaviors that. He just gave him an ultimatum. He says, correct your abhorrent behaviors on your days off, or I'm going to have to fire you. And right now you're demoted. So, you know, <clears throat> come on. You know, it's interesting, too, because I'm thinking about it now. A lot of our demons come, they really surface on our days off. Right. And that's where we get a lot of firefighters in trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're a Most of when you're a leader, I think a lot of your demons surface when you're on the job because you have that positional power and you have more latitude for some of those demons to come forward. I I've been pretty fortunate over the last 30 years because I'm married to a woman who seems to not have any problems to point out my demons. Mm -hmm. So she will tell me, no, you're full of shit. You know, you, you you need to stop acting like that. You're acting like this. And I've actually thanked her over the years. But, yeah, it seems like in the task level demons are usually in trouble on their days off. And, and the supervisor and the managerial seems like they're doing things at work that gets them in a lot of trouble. See, like task level demons are like potato cannons. Uh, you know, yeah. they, they're having fun, maybe too much fun that borderlines on hazing or things like that that have to be managed yeah. and controlled within the station environment. Because once they spill out of that, it, it's a whole nother level. Is it yeah. when you get outside of the station, it becomes a, a bigger issue because you got more levels involved in it. So you need supervisors that can keep the demons at bay while you're at work, but not so much that they micromanage you where you don't want to be there. So, I mean, it's kind of a balance. And then like the I think what we're talking about with like the off duty stuff, that's inherent to all levels. Okay. And I remember here in Phoenix, the city manager was going to. Uh, pass a, a rule that said, if you get a DUI, you're fired, you're terminated. And uh, because it was a problem in, in, throughout the city, in every department, police, fire, all of them, sanitation, the parks, the, it, human beings consume alcohol and get in trouble. That's, that's kind of what happened. So in the city manager's like, we're done, and then we're going to have a zero attitude approach to this. We're just not going to tolerate it anymore. And at the time, the most uh, gifted person in the finance department was dealing with uh, abhorrent alcoholism. Like, he was institutionalized a couple times for it. And so <clears throat> the fire chief brought that up in the meeting and said, you know, if you get busted after a glass of wine at dinner, you're fired. He says, your finance person who is basically running the financial end of the city, is he's on his third or fourth. I mean, he may go to jail. So you, you can't pass a law that's going to destroy the city because you get rid of all the people that run it. He says you have to <clears throat> there has to be a better thing where you bring them back in. And they mm -hmm. now you can't get caught doing this because it's a crime. So you have but there's steps you can take to help the employee. And so that's kind of and the city manager said, you know, that you're, you're right. That's you know, <clears throat> we want to do this because it causes such a problem. But the solutions shouldn't be worse than the problem itself. Right. So. I was thinking about you know, the, the leadership level that we see uh, with angels and demons. And it seems like 
people who get into the position of, let's say, fire chief, we can open up any trade website every week and see where they've either abused their power in retaliating against people within their organization, stealing money, um, you oh. know, all, all kinds of demons coming out yeah. when, when you kind of go unchecked, especially. Yeah. I, and I think a lot of these guys end up or, or women um, end up. Um, being two faced with their bosses, right? The, the, right. Uh, mm -hmm. They're 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 one person around the city manager or council, and then when they dealing with their minions, they're acting a certain way. Right. Um, and it's really easy to to mm -hmm. have that positional power be abused and have the have the demons come out because if you're that kind of person, you're not getting angels back from the rank and file. No. They're going to be giving you demons right on up the line, right? Depending on how they feel about you, right? They're not they're not going to help you a lot no, with no, your demons, no. yeah. You know, we talked about this uh, a couple podcasts ago, but uh like the dynamic between the authority having jurisdiction uh, the fire chief and labor yeah. and how they're the, like the, the trio of power for the fire department and like your demons. <clears throat> we know a fire chief in uh, Arizona who, and he's got his own demons, but he's a very nice guy, but, but his demons, <clears throat> and they weren't even really demons. They, they, they were just almost like neutral charges. They weren't angels. They weren't, it's just the way he deals. It, it's his personality. And so the, the AHJ thought, well, we don't like the, the way you process things, so we're going to get rid of you. And then there was some politics thrown into it, too. And his union came to his defense and said, no, if you do that, you, you're, you're going to war with us. Mm -hmm. So uh -uh, knock it off right now. Yeah. He's our chief. He's our mm -hmm. leader. We, we respect him. We will follow him. And if you screw with him, you, you, get, the, you get the clause. So. And and, they, and God bless the HJ. They said, "Okay, we'll we'll figure out how to process uh, this his abnormal way of dealing with us." And so yeah. that they, if you if you look at the the other seven items on that list, you'll see that how those play into the angels and demons. Also, that that statement on the front is is to recognize that we all have them and we need to manage them. You need to understand what yours are and try to do the best you can. But you'll see on that list as we go through, we'll come back to this again because there's some really good items on there. It's like, oh, that's a that's a demon, mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. way you treat people or whatever. Well, so. and all that is, is he put it all in a book in the AMP and leadership. That's where you find it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if if you're interested in looking more, just. The, the book, I don't know what we charge for, 20 bucks or something. It's it's, it's a it, great book. You know, it's I, tremendous. Yeah. In fact, the biggest knock on the book after it came out is it was just too basic and simple. And you're mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, most things are to fix problems is simple. It's, it's executing and actually carrying through that's so hard. But, you know, they want a pill that's, no, it's not the seven phases <laughs> with Navy SEALs. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's it close is enough. very simple. But if you turn to a page and put it on a kitchen table and firefighters, talk about whatever that body part is and mm -hmm. how that yeah. how using that party mm -hmm. body part affects your leadership ability then you get you have some fun times oh yeah because yeah. you can point to like for instance your feet where does your fire chief or where does your leader spend their time mm -hmm. where do they walk to and place themselves right are they here at the fire? Are they at their office? Are they having lunch? Are they meeting with the Where? What are they doing? It's kind of like our last podcast with Pat Dale, mm -hmm. where he's yeah. talking about the the Drexel uh, study study yeah. of uh, yeah. you know leadership basically yeah. and trust and harmony and the rest of it. Yeah. I mean that's. <clears throat> Yeah, it's like running a farm. You spend your time growing crops or yeah. killing the cows, whichever. It's <clears throat> yeah. Well, let's talk about point number two. What we is it? Don't take stuff personally. <laughs> and it's also one of the four agreements from Don Miguel Luez, which is a, a great book, too. But when, when we take things Hey, man, you're going Jeff King on me now. I know, sorry it's, about yeah, Come that. on, yeah. fans. Here's my bibliography. Yeah, 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 you're, yeah. you're wearing a gas station shirt. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um, how does that taking things personally manifest itself in leadership? Let's take a quick break. B-Shifter has teamed up with Waldorf University to offer you a unique opportunity to advance your career in fire science administration. This partnership means you can now transfer your blue card certifications toward earning a degree from Waldorf. 
That's right. Your training with Blue Card can fast track you to a bachelor's degree in fire science with Waldorf offering up to 75% of transferable credits. Whether you're looking to take on a leadership role, build your skills, or move up the ranks, this partnership can help make that happen. Blue Card students, staff, and their families get a 10% tuition discount, and the application fee is completely waived. Waldorf University is known for its flexible online programs, so you can keep serving your community while you study on your terms. Head over to waldorf.edu slash blue card now. Send in that free application and advance your fire service career with Waldorf University. I'll tell you what. What happens when when people take something personally, they want to respond in kind, mm-hmm. right? Retribution. If I, yeah, if yeah. I take something I'm get personal... Even. Then you start keeping a list, you start mm-hmm. having a group of people, you start pe- treating people who treat you a one way different than the way another group treats you. And it just becomes this whole, uh, everything is then on a win or lose situation. I like that person or I dislike that person because of what they did and how I felt about it. Yeah, man, but that's life. I, I mean, <clears throat> right. But you yeah, got, during your career, you kept you had a memory and there were people you like, no, nah, you do this again. But, if, I'm you, gonna, uh, but uh. if you show that, say as a fire yeah, chief, if it, you show that you I mean, that. that yeah, can, you can't play favoritism. No, yeah. you can't play favoritism. But you can't you're not going to forget the past. Either. Oh, no, so when somebody does something, you're like, no, man, that's you can't do this again. So that, oh, I yeah. guess that's. So I guess the key is you have a system where you can process right. that th- those ill feelings towards one another and deal with it. But the thing about taking it personal, I remember that in um, so there's two way there's two two aspects of that. Why right? one of them is a negative where you take something very personal and it's neg you think oh that son of a gun shouldn't have done that I'm feel very pissed off about that or you what Bruno says in there when you're a leader you'll have a people blowing a lot of Smoke up your gazoo, I think is the way you say. Yeah, sunshine up your gazoo. And you can't take that personal either. I mean, there was a point in time where I thought, oh, man, I must be special because everybody's being really nice to me when I was a new fire chief. And then I realized, no, they're being nice to you because you're the new fire chief, dude. Remember when you would write the tactical for a promotional exam and everybody be real nice to you? Yeah, it's It's like that. Yeah, it's probably like that. (laughs) Because because they want, you know, I'd say they... They want something, whether it's right or wrong. Somebody wants something from the person in charge, and and many times what they want is is something that'll improve the organization. But but people will treat you in a specific way, and you're thinking if you think that's because you're special, then you know I always like that deal where you know the <laughs> pe- people say, "Well, firefighters are heroes and all that." I never got into that too much. I always thought firefighters are people who had who find themselves in a position to do some heroic things sometimes, but they're not heroes. They didn't say, I'm going to be a hero. They just happen to be in a place and something occurs and they interact. And that, that ended up being a pretty positive thing for a customer. But uh, we get caught up in that whole hero stuff out in the, out in public. And you can't, you bring that BS back to the fire station, they'll eat you up with that mm-hmm. one. Right? New firefighters experience that, I think, a little bit. Yeah, you can't, <clears throat> yeah, we don't act out heroism within the yeah. cult of the fire. No, that, yeah. that, that's singing of the choir. There's, right? there's people that do that. Right? I, I remember there was a guy who wore, he won, uh, he was awarded Firefighter of the Year Valor Medal, right? And the next shift, he showed up to work wearing that medal around his and, – and the crew, it was it was the funniest shift I ever watched. It was – and you thought, you can't – this is horrible what they're doing. But he bought it on himself. What is he doing? <clears throat> so – Yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm we sell br- that to the public. That, yeah. I mean, that that's a deal that we, that's yeah. part of our thing out, but that's not in. Yeah, that's part external. of the relationship that we have with the community. Yes, we're here for you. We're quick. We're nice. We do the right thing. Yeah. All of that. It's a prevent harm, survive, be nice. Yes, that's us. I know what you did to a firefighter calendar. Yeah. Uh, they exactly. weren't heroes. They were, they were representing the fire department so that 
whatever that calendar was sold and people got monies from that or yeah, some uh-huh. so it went to charity right people got yeah. a charity got money from that uh-huh. and it funded something important very important but don't get caught up as you're one of the guys in the calendar I'm a calendar and, boy and now you're special because that doesn't work out very well well yeah they ended up well but it was part of the hero circle because it, at that time it was in what the late 80s yeah mm-hmm. it was the early 80s actually yeah, yeah. and we were just finding out that hydration was so much more important than science had given it credit for. And so the deal was, is you had to drink like a gallon of water during the shift, right? Well, so we figured, well, the best way to do that is going to the bathroom should be more fun than it is. So we glued all of the calendars in the urinal in the fire station. <laughs> they decoupaged them. Yeah. And it was like, <clears throat> it was glue that was made in Russia somewhere out of rocket fuel because mm-hmm. it never came off. It was, In fact, we were ordered for a long time. I think we just had to buy new urinals. It was just <laughs> so, yeah. In fact... Thousands of years from now, if they find those urinals, it will throw off the archaeologist in the future. And they'll say, the demons, the demons took them over. Yeah, so don't take things personal, especially if... if, Look at the man meat in the yellow porcelain. Good and bad. (laughs) Talk to me, Ronnie. Well, it's it's never dwell on how people treat you is, right. is one of the points of that. Yeah. And and replace fragility with resilience. That's what he So said. whether you're the guy, you know, in the sometimes you're in the toilet, sometimes you're in the king's throne. Hey. Both of them are just mere feet from one another. But you know, you 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 <laughs> don't you you know what whichever position you're in, just just take yeah. it as it comes and move along with it because yeah. you know we we all get the smoke blown and we all get criticized. And oh yeah! If you dwell on either one, it's going to hang you up. And it could be the same person depending on what day. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, they're going to get to you eventually. They always do. Yeah. So you're going to have your turn at the barrel. It just what's up, Bruno's hit. That's that beautiful <clears throat> Pony Tunes where you got a chief officer up in a tree and uh, a, a firefighter's looking up at him. Might even be Bruno looking up at this guy in a tree, and Bruno says, "If you climb high enough in the organization, you people will eventually see your ass." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the way yeah. it goes. Yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. people will witness that. So don't take it personal. Our next one, number three, is play your position slash stay in your lane. Yeah, that's important. And I use the example there in, uh, I had the example in the article that we had a shift commander who never really, uh, he promoted to the position of shift commander and he, he, he played that role fairly well, but he was stuck in the position of firefighter on the nozzle and he couldn't get past that. I got to be the hero. I got to, you know, you ever see people when they promote to captain and they still want to be the best firefighter on the job? That was this guy. So he's out there responding lights and sirens, violating every code three driving rule there is to get to a fire. And he's in a battalion vehicle. You don't need to do that. They got the water in the engine. Even worse, he was in a shift commander vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, He was was above the BCs. Yeah, he was in charge. Where's the senior advisor? Oh, he's on the knob. (laughs) Oh, his demons are out today. (laughs) So that wasn't his role. He was playing another role. And then you see people within the organization who think they should be one role up. And that's where a lot of that comes from where people have problems with their supervisors is they feel like they need really need to be the supervisor Mm -hmm. and uh, they're better than that person. They're going to show them from their position and that doesn't work out. So wherever your role is in your, they're all important roles, right? The firefighter has an important role. We talk about strategic, tactical and tasks. They all have to be lined up and they have to make sense. But when you start playing a, when you're a strategic level BC and you're on the fire ground and you're acting like you're at the task level, and you, we've seen this before, where mm-hmm. in organizations you'll look at the tactical guy, and he's supposed to be the tactical boss and managing that uh, sector group, and he's actually inside as a task level guy. He's not managing anything other than his own actions. Tank to pump, Frank! Tank, Tank to, to pump! pump. <laughs> Tank to pump, Frank! Tank to pump! 
Uh, yeah, you, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I, I made Hag watch Sorry. that last night. Oh, yeah, it yeah. So it's good. a fire chief yeah. who's not getting water, and okay. he's on the nozzle, and you're the yeah. oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, okay. All, all of these things, yeah. uh, and and you know, talk about playing positions. There's there's guys walking all around him with air packs on, fully turned out, but he's on the knob, and he yeah. he, he advances this hose line onto a deck that was just on fire, and he puts his hand on the railing, and he burns his hand. And, and he screams, you know, <laughs> curse words. And then there's a guy from the public off to the off to the off the camera <laughs> that goes, that guy's such an animal. You know, <laughs> this guy's a legend in his own mind. Right. right? And he's well known in the fire service, I guess, now for it, because yeah. they had stickers at FDIC with his oh, wow. face on it. That's how. But, um, you know, staying in your lane, knowing that, hey, there's firefighters here. Those are the guys who are supposed to be putting out the fire. There are company officers here. They're going to supervise the guys putting out the fire. I'm here to have that, you know, three thirty thousand foot view of what's going on. And and you're leaving a gaping hole if you're not not playing your role. Right? And that happens in in the um, administrative mm-hmm. part of leadership too. You know, I've seen a lot of uh, not a lot, but I've seen where leaders are middle managers or fire chiefs try to perform the work of their staff. Let your, Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing that I knew as a fire chief was I didn't have a clue what she was doing over there with all those numbers and all that. She would tell me, this is what we're doing. And let your staff do their work too. Don't get within, don't get in the middle of all that. You got fire chiefs that feel like they got to be the ops chief, they got to be the finance guy. They got to be the logistics person. You put those people in position, let them play their position and support them the best you can. Cause your job is to support them servant leadership, right? Well, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. That's how things get done. And if you, if you're in charge and you have to approve of everything or do everything or be involved in everything, yeah. it's a, it, you've already limited the scope of what you're going to do organizationally. Well, that takes us to number four, you get what you give. I think that's a good segue into that yeah. because if you are a micromanager and you model that behavior, you're going you're gonna to get that back. So talk about the boomerang effect that the, the other behaviors have when, when you give those kind of well, good and bad. You're doing your job. So, so what it is is the system's designed. It, let's just use the fire ground system, strategic tactical task. Well, if you're a strategic or tactical level response chief, that's your role at the incident scene is to fill in strategically and tactically. It's not to <clears throat> you're not there to micromanage task level operations and intervene in them. So <clears throat> every time that I went when I was a shift commander, every time I went to get the IC out of their rig to drag them to the command post. Right. When I first started, we thought, you call them over over the radio, they wouldn't come. Th- I'm just going to go get them. Every t- that walk, 80% of the time, I ended up with a task-level thing in my hand, helping an engineer do something. Like this is bullshit. There's like <clears throat> 90% of the people on the scene are here to do just what I'm doing, and there's only the 5% of us meant to do what I'm supposed to be doing. So every time I dick around with a piece of hose or something, I'm not doing my job and I'm really not doing somebody else's cause they're going to get to it at some point. I mean, that's what it, what we call them evolutions is you don't do it all at once. So we learned that like, no, I just, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I set the command post up and I tell the IC I'm transferring command to the CV it, 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 alarm it, it's over with me now yeah. well now they're sprinting they're like no what are you doing with it? i'm well. getting your ass in the car baby right now you're going to be running the tactical operation here i'm going to be supporting you and like early on especially when we first started with older bcs because we yeah. were younger and they were and they're like what do you want me i want you to do what you're supposed to do yeah <laughs> And then a few times, and w- what happens is they figure out, oh, this really works a lot better than the old system with the staff deputies. Because what started to happen is we would figure out before we ever called them over, we only got two units in staging, get another alarm. So when they would get over, they think, oh, God, I should have struck another alarm. Th- no, we took care of it. Sit down and just keep running. You got four companies in staging. now. Oh, great. So they could do what they that Wow. And so afterwards in the, the review... You, you, you talk about that, and they thought, well, thank God that happened. And you're like, yeah, I learned I, I, I'm better off doing this on the last fire 
setting up the strategic command post, then helping the engine company in the key attack position get his water supply hooked up. Mm-hmm. That, that's really not what a shift commander should be doing. So a lot of this is self-correcting in the thing, yeah. because a lot of times the guys you talked about is they got validation by being there because it was all their friends blowing sunshine up their asses. Right. So that, that's it just kind of reaffirmed. I'll oh, keep coming. Right. And you could see that on a shift. And, you know, you had a cowboy shift that, oh, no, man, if it's in our first two area and we're three away, we're going to be there. We're going to try to beat the first. You think you're going to end up rolling your fire truck one day. And one day he rolled his fire truck. That's so, a, I mean, that's just, <clears throat> well, all the bosses weren't lined up. That's why he got to roll his truck. So, uh, yeah. I mean, that's just kind of an example of they weren't staying in the right lane as it became more fraternal. And when it becomes fraternal and we're all together like that, then you start to. Yeah. Lose your levels. You know that give what you get thing also? You know, on the fire ground and in the in that it you can see it right away. Sometimes it takes a little longer in the administrative world. When you start treating people, give what you get, respect, kindness, and trust, right? Those I think of those three, and I don't mean these in a soft kind of way. I mean I'm like Respect people for the job they do and and thank them for doing the job. Trust them to do the right job and then communicate with them and, and, and be kind to them because they're going to start off. You're in a position of power. You're the fire chief or you're the leader and they're going to they're going to try to support you and they're going to say, well, he's just like that. And then eventually one day they're going to say the hell with him. He treats me like that. I'm going to treat, and you're going to get what you got, mm-hmm. right? Or mm-hmm. did I say yeah. that right? Yep. And um, they're going to, and you're going to need them for something, and they're going to go, "Hey, you're the chief. What do you know about it?" Mm-hmm. So if you and that, uh, I've seen that happen where I see that it, you know, the relationship the, starts to go. What does the old man call that? Some kind of disobedience. It's uh, it's it's uh, insubordinate dis. Uh, Disloyal insubordination That's or some it. something like that. Loyal, They're, it's loyal dis uh, loyal insubordination. Insubordination. Yeah. And, well, well, and then there's a loyal insubordination is when they fix you. When they right. say, hey, "Boss, stop it! You're going to yeah. hurt yourself." The other is like they let you hurt yourself because you're an yeah. asshole, and they yeah. will. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so you'll get that mm-hmm. back. But I've seen the the, the kindest, gentlest women. In the it work their butts off, and they don't get all the hero and all the other stuff. And nobody's bringing them cookies to mm-hmm. their administration station, and they're taking care of fire chiefs. And the fire chiefs don't treat them the way they need to be treated. They're going to turn on that guy eventually because they're going to get tired of it, and then he's going to be shit out of luck because yeah. he needs those people or she needs those people, and uh, that's where you give what you, you get what you give. I really believe that. I remember. Uh, the, 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 like you said, the, the 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 administrative staff. Yeah, they went to the fire chief once and they said, "Hey, man, um, the, why do the firefighters get all the credit? You know, you know they're loved by the public, and they and, and they, you know, the firefighter of the year, the awards banquet, and all that." And he says, "Well, he says, I guess the easiest way for me to explain it is when the Yankees win the World Series, who's in the ticker tape parade?" So it's all players. They don't put the yeah. coaches or the front office staff. None of them. He says it's it's not fair, but that's who, that's the 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 poster child of the department. And I remember, it seemed like during the awards banquets for the fire department, as we started giving more and more awards to to non operational people, and it became like. An hour of awards and five minutes of it was for ops. And the old man said, no, 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 no. They want to be recognized. And that's their right. They get to be recognized. And that, that makes the department better. He says, that's, they pay you. That's, uh, right. yeah. He said, well, so that's, that's he it. He gave the reasoning, but I don't think he liked the reasoning. And then yeah. he kind of changed it to mm-hmm. where you include them. So we well, don't include them enough. But I he gave think. them an explanation they understood. Yeah, and they could, they, they think, okay, that makes sense. I get yeah. it. And, and he said, you know, they're all. Also, the ones that get hurt, he yeah. says, you know, they go to the hospital and ambulances over their job. And But have you seen these these leaders, fire chiefs or whoever, and they'll walk into a room and they'll treat everybody. Well, they'll, they'll ignore everybody until they get to their boss. <laughs> and then they 
suck up like it's just so frustrating when you see that, and that's not yeah, that, 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 that's not kind. You're not no, being nice. Yeah, to that, that, that's 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 a toxic. Uh, when you're only being nice yeah. to the people, that's a that sign can, and symptom that you don't want to work that that place, yeah. or at least with that person. Yeah. And, and then when there's enough of them that are allowed to turn the whole thing, then it's it's been yeah. it, then leadership is lost. It, it's OK. We gave it over to these people. I, uh, I, the demons ours, got it. A friend of ours was following up with a fire chief about a conversation she has. She had a very important role in this organization as PIO. And she was trying to share an idea and some things with this fire chief. And um, and. After the conversation was done, she's very proactive. She came back around about a week later and says, hey, those things that we talked about, I'm just wondering where you, how you're feeling about it. And he actually said to her, I don't listen to you when you talk. He actually said that to her. I don't actually listen to you when you talk. That's not given. See, we, we've we talked about this a lot. Is the fire chief should know more about running the fire department than the mayor? Yeah. Right. So the mayor comes and says, I want you to do this, this, this. And if it affects the operational capability of the organization, the fire chief needs to represent that and say, no. Yeah, that's his role. You're going to destroy, you're going to worsen our ability to deliver service to the customer. We're not interested in doing that. Well, the same thing's true from the bottom. So she knows more about dealing with the public than the fire chief ever will. Ever. That's what she does. That's her, that is her world. She is the Babe Ruth of doing that. And so now this fire chief, just by virtue of being, I'm the chief and you're a captain. So he's, he's a demon. He, he, he is not a successful fire chief, Terry, this individual that you're discussing. Well, there's a part of this that in, in this, one of the points that is made is if you hoard power, the smaller it actually gets. Yeah, uh-huh. that's true. Would, would that be hoarding power if, if, if you know, not listening? And, I don't and even think anything. it's that, JV. I think he's just he's just an asshole, and he sees himself as that much better because he outranks people. Yeah, I think hoarding power is something a little bit different from that because there's people that hoard power in, in every position. I mean, I, we had battalion chiefs who thought they knew things that you didn't know and they weren't going to share information, you know, Information is power, right? In an organization, if you know something I don't know, then you have some sort of power that I don't have. That's kind of all bullshit, but it's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it really works. I it's was, currency. Oh, I know what exactly. Okay, yeah. Because yeah. I had a boss that was, we're on a need to know basis here, and you don't need <laughs> yeah. to know. And then yeah, it was like, all right, then, you know, that's his, no that was his power. He kept the power. Well, a lot of people that don't know just say that. Is yeah. you don't need to know because they can't explain it to you. They're yeah. like, well, no, I'm in charge and you're not. I don't know what yeah. we do really anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Number five. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these are pretty simple. Cinco. No, the more that you use power, the less you'll have. That's kind of what you said just a minute ago, mm-hmm. just in different terms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, the more you share it, the best examples were Alan Brunacini and Pat can tell me. As those guys shared their power, as they gave it away to people, and it just boomeranged. And we're talking positional power versus personal power, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you have positional power and you have personal power. And, and you can give away both of those, right? You can allow somebody uh, to... To act in a way, to, I mean, you assign people something, and you trust them. What did Bruno say? You know, give me, give me a job to do. Mm-hmm. Get out of my way. Give me the yeah. tools to do it. Get out of my way mm-hmm. and come back later. Train you, equip you. Yeah, go do your job, yeah, and then we'll talk about it. That's giving yeah. power away. Um, but the personal, that's actually accountability for doing your job. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. the accountability model. Right? Well, see, but we talked about those young shift commanders. They're 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 not ready to give up the nozzle power. That that because that's their ego identity. I, I have to prove my worth and metal is just a basic firefighter person. How about loud displays of power? You guys talk about loud displays. And yeah, we talked about that. You so you. I mean, you should never. What I always say is, you should never yell down. Always yell up. When I yelled, I yelled up. And I yelled up probably more than I should have, I think. And I'm talking about city managers Whisper who wanted down, to cut punch up. resources, who wanted to not support firefighters, who wouldn't build new fire stations when the old ones are carc- carcinogenic every day for the firefighters, those kind of things. I would yell up and I'd get mad. And, and, uh, but, 
I don't feel like a fire chief yelling down at somebody is very productive yeah. because it, it doesn't, it, they're not listening. Once you start yelling, people quit listening, especially when you're the boss. You think the louder you are, the more they're listening. Yeah, right. It doesn't work that way. It, it, they're not listening to it all. All they're doing is looking at you and thinking, what a knucklehead. Mm-hmm. So never yell down. So, you know, large displays, I think what Bruno said in there is is loud displays aren't necessary unless you're like on the on the hazard zone and a safety issue, a customer service issue, something where you need to get in there right now and stop whatever's occurring or change that behavior right away, whether you're a supervisor or a battalion chief. But just yelling down and being loud, it, it, Bruno – he's most effective leaders like Bruno. You don't hear him raise your voice very often. You know, there was a, it's a million years ago and it was, it may have it, late seventies. I think this happened. And uh, there was a administrative person who was connected to public education. That was, uh, they were at station one for some reason. And it was there. Uh, it, it was, during the the uh, the union shift was on duty that day, and they said some disparaging thing about this individual over the PA that they heard, and they said it in jest, but it was not. It was mean spirited. They shouldn't have said it. So this person ends up going back to admin, and they're like sad and tell their friend, and their friend goes in and tells the fire chief, says you. Have you heard what happened today? And he says, no, what happened? So they tell him. And he says, they did what? He says, really? And so he goes in and he talks to this person. And she says, yeah, he says, you know, how would you do that? He says, don't worry about it. I want you to know I apologize for that right now. Okay? So <clears throat> that shouldn't have happened. He goes in. He calls the shift commander because that's the shift commanders back then. He says, you take everybody from station one and you put them out of service and you send them to the training academy right now. <clears throat> they're all off duty. And he showed up to the training academy and they're in the auditorium and they're all sitting there. And <clears throat> these are all big, tough guys and little fire chiefs down in the pit. <clears throat> and he went around the room and their president was sitting up there and he did all of them. And I guess they just, some of them were crying. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, that's, that's how bad it was. And he turned into a demon. And I had one of them tell me afterwards, he says, <coughs> oh, man, he says, you grew up with him, but I did not know that there was that side to that man. <laughs> yeah. And he says, he scared the shit out of me. Yeah. That he, he, that's only because he could have killed every one of you if he would have walked up the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> because <coughs> you would have had to kill him. And I don't think any of you got it in you. Yeah. You're... You're not tough enough yet. Yeah. So the next day they sent her, and this is like in the 70s, $300 worth of flowers. Her office was full of flowers. <clears throat> wow. He, now I don't know if you can do that today, but you could do that in the late 70s. Well, you know, so when I went out and and I was the fire chief out there and I would talk about Bruno, I I think there was people that confused kindness with weakness. I think they did with Bruno. I think they did with me. I think they do with other leaders. But they're they're not the same thing. Being kind is the hardest thing to do sometimes. And especially oh, when you really, like you said earlier, you know how you really feel about that person, but mm-hmm. you're going to be kind to them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, that's not easy to do, but that's not weakness. So. Because after that deal, he was nice to all those people. Here, and that, that was the one. It was like, no, don't do this. And and then he turned the page. Now we're back. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Now we're all going to live here tomorrow. We, it, 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 I'm going to fix this now. You ain't going to do it again. So so, <clears throat> being kind isn't being weak, and being loud isn't being strong. No. Well, and there's another part of this: taking credit for everything and not sharing the credit with with yeah, people who deserve the credit. Yeah, you know, the, he used to call it front and centerist. I think you know it, it was <laughs> it, it was it, it was you know the fire chief that hops in front of the camera or takes credit for yeah. every good thing that happens within the organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, his happiest thing was everybody thought Bob Kahn was a fire chief until he became it, you know, like 28 years later. But he says, yeah. no, he says, I don't, He'd they don't need to know room. I even exist. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, enough people know who the fire chief is that we're going to be okay. So uh, Bob is going to be the, the PIO. And so he was like the game show host for the yeah. fire department is what it ended up being. Well, and the brand was, if you knew that someone was from your department, Teaching at FDIC, it didn't matter whether it was Steve Kreiss or whoever. Yeah. You were going to get some good information, mm-hmm. and, and it wasn't the fire chief having to give all that information. Yeah. yeah. He did his piece on leadership and stuff, and mm-hmm. these other guys were talking about rapid intervention isn't rapid and uh, all the other stuff they, they go and teach about. Well, and that's what happened, is they defaulted. Is <clears throat> We start doing all this stuff at the CTC. It's brand new. It opens up. It's 2002, and we say, okay, we're, we're, we've looked at this enough with the drills and everything else we've done, that we can make some conclusions and some uh, fixes to this. And so we we introduce on deck, right? Well, three quarters of the cities, there's probably about a dozen cities going through training then at the CTC. And they three quarters of them said, we're not comfortable with that. You know, who'd you clear this through? Well, we're responsible for managing volume two. And we've just done about... $2 million worth of drills over the last two years. And we've clearly demonstrated, we know this. And they were, they're agreeing, yeah, but, you know, you didn't get permission. We thought, we don't need it. We, we work for the guy who gave us the power. And so <clears throat> there was yelling and screaming, and they all left. And so we thought, so cries reports back. The next session, fire chief comes to the CTC. He says, all right. And oh, the, the, so... 12 cities, probably eight fire chiefs in the room then right. Ob, with ops chiefs. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. it's full. <clears throat> and he says, uh, what they're teaching here is what we're doing in Phoenix and what's going into volume two. And if you want to know what is going on, come here. And this is what we're doing. He says, but we're moving away from rapid intervention and going on deck. He says, these are the experts in it. The, these guys have run the drills. They put the, 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 this is <clears throat> everything that they're finding out is supported with the facts and, and kind of after action washes and everything else. He says, this is this is what the future is. If you want to change it, you come here to do it. This is how it happens. He says, if there if you have concerns or you have something you want to see tried, this is where we do it. So. That became the thing. If you wanted to input the, the operational procedures, there was a system for doing it then. You know, those people that scream, that loud people, I, it's interesting. They they scream in public at somebody or about something as a show, you know, as kind of to demonstrate how theater. much power. Yeah, theater, yeah. their power. Or they, or they yell in private at somebody to really demeaning. To really demean somebody. And those are the two times you see that. And neither one of them are right. You, why would you yell either time, right? But that's when you watch people with the real serious demons that they got to show that they're in charge by being the loudest or having the biggest bugles or whatever, or they do it. In, <laughs> I, I've, heard yeah. of, I've heard of fire chiefs calling in a secretary or staff assistant and yelling at them in their office. It's like that she should go home and tell her husband, who is a block layer, to come in and beat the snot out of her. <laughs> yeah, man. That's what she ought to do. I don't know. I just, I, yeah, it's, it's, people that yell frustrate me because there's, there's no reason for it. You know, sometimes you'd have people screaming in the command van. <laughs> and I remember being in there with Hobel, and, and we would look at each other, and they'd be going crazy, and Hobel would be whispering over in the IC's ear, just, just say this on the radio. And yeah. I mean, we completely ignore them. Yeah. And then that was a deal where, was, like, we're both senior advisors looking at each other, and that cries is there. So, like, our boss, and you think, okay, as, <clears throat> as my boss, please get your counterpart yeah. out of here yeah. before. Mm-hmm. Because Hobo's going to do what we need to do over there, and if he keeps being disruptive, I'm going to help him out of the CV. So it, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, this ain't working. Bruno talks a lot about balance. It's almost like a Zen type thing, mm-hmm. balance of power. Yeah. Um, so you know, you use too much, it's not good. Right. You use not enough, then things go crazy. So how do you find that balance? I, you, well, you look just recently with the Chicago Bears, they had an offensive coordinator <laughs> that they, they said was too nice of a guy. He was in charge of the offense, and now they're coming out saying he was just too nice in that position. He was one of the guys, and he he was in a position of power to, to run the offense, 
but he didn't do it effectively because he didn't use enough of his power. He had he had, he was in the power position, he didn't use it. And then you got people that overuse their power. We talked about that. But it is a balance when you're in a when you're in a position of power. You got to balance that because you you don't want to be the guy who's so uh, you use your power so little that you become ineffective. And you do that sometimes by not showing up as a boss or as a fire chief. You see some ghost fire chief. I've, I've known some throughout my career. Mm-hmm. And they were fire chief forever. Yeah. Because they never made fatal mistakes because they never did anything really that you could make a mistake at that yeah. would cost you anything. Just because a fire chief's been there a long time don't mean they're effective. Don't no, mean, yeah. does mm-hmm. not mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just say mm-hmm. that's my language. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, you know, tenure in position isn't an example, isn't the, what do you call it, a barometer of being a good or effective fire chief. But um, it, even you know, towards you know, the end of my career as a fire chief in Glenda, there was days I was kind of like tired. I just, I, I got to go. I got to go. And, and that's why I knew, man, I think I probably need to retire now because, um, you got to be so so many times being just there. And we talk about once again to the anatomy and physiology. Where are you as a fire chief? Are you in? Are you there in a position where your people that need you can get a hold of you or whatever? But yeah, see, but if you're going to be a good leader, is you have to lead, and yeah. like there are those we talked about them, the ghost positions where they just they, they can live forever in an organization because they're not disruptive, and. Just not being disruptive is, 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 is I, I don't know, you, 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 you don't, the, the lawnmower cuts the, the highest blade first, I guess, which is the leader of the grass, if you, you want to say. You know, you made me think, when I went to Oceanside, my very first fire chief position, 49 years old, and what the hell, and I went there, and the city manager, I was there for a while, and I found out the city manager at the time was upset because the union was in a was in the position of power. They were running the fire department. Well, I'd been there just a few weeks, long enough to tell them, yeah, and you should thank them for that because your fire chief is not in a position of power. He's not acting like the fire chief. Thank God somebody stepped up in the organ. And I'm not talking about the interim t- fire chief was there, Jeff Bowen. He's a good dude. But I'm talking about the chief before him is that you're lucky the union stepped in and actually took control because you said it, if you have a ghost fire chief, someone's going to take power. Yeah. And it could be somebody in the admin side. It could be somebody in the union side. It could be somebody. See, but if you're if you're a ghost fire chief, you're the top. So if whoever you give power to is disruptive, you get credit for the disruption. And they're yeah. going to get you. So they're good at figuring out you're going to. There's guys that work for us that work for ghost fire chiefs. And, and they weren't bad people. They just. No, it's too much lifting, and I'm not going to, uh-uh. It's too unsettling, or for whatever reason, they just grow into that position. I th- I think there's more of them than there aren't, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> you used to say uh, the, the fire chiefs that would be in the office at 1030 because they forgot their keys. <laughs> <laughs> they had to come back in because they forgot yeah. their keys, and they're gone. Yeah, exactly. You don't see them again for the rest of the day. Yeah, good really. golfers. Yeah, yeah they're, they're really exactly. good. Scratch. Well, yeah, we're meeting. Uh-huh. No, no, this is where, how we meet. We got oh, okay, that's a lot of fun. All right, number six, remember how it felt. Oh, that's my favorite with Bruno because if you think about it, we talked about it earlier today at lunch. I think Bruno never had an SCBA on. That's how long ago he had been on. He had a rebreather. And he he had a rebreather, and he had never been on a a cab with a or a A fire engine with a roof. Yeah. Yeah, never. And you would talk to Bruno, and people did, and you would think that he just stepped off. Well, that's how Scott Pellin eulogized him. He talked about all the things he had never done, and he says, and then he became the leader of it all. <laughs> yeah, he never started an IV, right? Yeah, 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 no, yeah. He never went on an EMS yeah, call. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, I don't think they did him then. Yeah. If, they, if, it, if it happened, it was probably by accident. <laughs> yeah. because well, something well, happened at the scene. Or... He was off the trucks by 70, 72. I mean, he was a, a upper level chief by 1972. Then. Yeah, I think yeah. he became the ops chief in 72. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so. so the thing about that is you know, I always like to tell city managers is that um, the people that listen, elected officials, is the fire service is a single level entry program for the most part. Right. People <laughs> is people. We all start as firefighters. And then if you want to, you can promote to captain and move on all the way up to 
mm-hmm. the fire chief if you want to, and there's power in that. But the you greatest, got the, you got close, right? You were one away. <laughs> uh, the greatest power in that is that you should remember how it was when you were down there, and you know all these. You know, well, that's you, what you're supervising and leading. Right? Isn't that work? Yeah. And, 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 and just the job that they do every day and, and, <laughs> and really understanding the, the, the role of a firefighter on the incident scene and just kind of understand the limitations that they're going through. But also when you come back and you're a fire chief and you went to the latest, greatest conference and you found this new widget and you're going to come back and throw it down on your fire department and expect everybody to adopt it with all the other crap they got going on. That's in this week's article, mm-hmm. by the way. Hey, man, do you have you got the same thing in your hand? What's that? This uh, oh, the no, Titan. That, I, I actually uh, killed a fly on a window. Oh, once. No. <laughs> that was a, oh you broke. Oh, so that's a scar. B-shifter. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm a B shifter. You know, you get those like heavy ropes between no. your palm and it's yeah, a, I'm a B shifter. I went, oh, a fly on window. <laughs> You've got Mediterranean hands. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's some kind of. Yeah, exactly. My mom was more upset over the window. <laughs> yeah, they always and are. I still have a, like a two yeah. inch scar. Yeah, once they see you still have your hand, then they're gonna yeah <laughs> whoop you. <laughs> yeah. And my dad was mad because they had to put stitches in it. Damn it, if Arkansas. We would have spit on that and yeah. held his hand <laughs> shut for a while. Well, super glue hadn't been invented yet. That's what they use now. <laughs> that's how I do the chapstick. <laughs> my <laughs> wife thinks that's so gross. I go, yeah. Terry says I can just. Go behind my ear. That's what they do in Arkansas. (laughs) You never get a fly landing on your lip. The the boss sets the tone. Let's go to that one. How about the boss? Oh yeah, we're still going through this. Yeah, yeah, we're going to finish them off. I can tell you uh, if something's going to be successful just based on how the fire chief receives it. If the fire chief's an advocate for it and wants it, it's going to work because it's coming from the top down. You're going to do this. That that they're going to use their leadership to implement that. So you have probably seen. Over the last however many years you've been doing this, 2005, more fire chiefs who stand in front of a, a group of firefighters and talk about a new program that's going to create change and how they – I don't think anybody other than you probably uh, have done that more than you. So you've seen how people act. Well, yeah. I've, I've, I mean, just think about doing what that. I do. It's, it's, yeah, you see, it, like <clears throat> we've been doing this long enough now – that you, the business outlives fire chiefs. So, yeah. like, you get fire chiefs say, we'll never do this. I don't believe in this. And then they leave. And then, well, I tell a story. We When we were going to Oceanside doing trainers, is there was a city in the, before we did the first trainer, because we did, like, three over a series of a year and a half or something. Well, the first trainer, this guy shows up from one of the departments, and we're talking right before class starts. And I said, well, how many people you got in class? He says, none. Zero. Oh, okay. He says, my fire chief is not a fan. So he says, I run the training division. I just want to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Great. Next time we do a trainer, he comes back. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Third time I see him, comes back. He says, hey, I got four guys in class today. I said, well, what happened to your fire chief? He says, I'm the fire chief. Mm. He says, fire chief retired three months ago. They gave it to me. He says, we're all in. And he was. He sent his four smartest, most capable people that I, wow. And so, I mean, but I, <clears throat> now he'll retire and the next guy or girl may say, no, nah, I don't like this. And they'll go away from it. So we've had departments that come in, they come out, they come in, they come out. And you're like, but. I use the analogy of those, the chairs in a the theater. Yeah. They seem mm-hmm. to work really well for me. The fire chief decides where you're looking. Yeah. He, he or she decides where you're focused. You're in charge of the screen. As an, as an organization, yeah, you're in charge of the screen. Where is your focus going to be? And if the focus is on safety and customer service, like we, we had our entire career. Yeah. It was simple. What's his, what, Prevent what's his harm, survive, be nice. That was it. Yeah. And when I was able to go to an organization, I cheated him a little bit, but it was survive, be nice, be accountable. Yeah. It was the same deal. Because yeah, it's the wanted, same thing. Yeah. Well, they wanted the accountability piece. Yeah. And it made, that, 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 it that, made yeah. sense for the organizations exactly. I yeah. was in. Yeah. But it was the same yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and you yeah. go to some fire Set departments. <laughs> right? Yeah. And go to some fire departments, and it was like they're uh, – their focus is on politics, or their focus is on grooming, you know, like an, an EMS. Yeah. You you see some fire departments that get so frustrated when they get a chief, and his only focus is on EMS. We're still fighting fires, and that's what we're dying. We're not dying on EMS calls. We're dying on fire calls. So we need that. 
So that's Chris Stewart calling me. I'm Christo! Like, he doesn't know we're doing all eight. Yeah, he, he you he, know, in fact, we should have taken the call. <laughs> well, we'll stretch this bitch out to yeah. three hours. Well, I'll feel like a Joe Rogan podcast. Like, just bring the weed in. <laughs> weed and pie, baby. Weed and pie. So anyway, the fire, the, the fire chief sets the tone because they create the focus for the organization. And then they kind of create the culture. You know, the definition of culture, we said, is the way things go around here, the way things are around mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. The fire chief kind of decides what's yeah. right and what is wrong. And you see organization where if it, it's in years ago. If it was okay to treat people like shit within your organization, whether they were a certain color or a certain sex, and that was or okay. Or a certain shift or, or what, yeah. Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever it was. Whatever it was yeah, yeah. They, they kind of set the tone. Whatever by, set of critical factors you got to. Yeah. So they set the tone by what they allow, what they don't allow. That's it. What they hold people accountable for. But I think the allow part is the most important. And people, you know, they say people will rise to the lowest level mm-hmm. in many cases. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, and you own it. And if you're the fire chief and you're okay with them doing stuff they shouldn't be doing in the stations, that you have validated that behavior now. Yeah. So everybody within that organization b- below you is at a disadvantage for trying to fix those set of problems. Yeah. You, you've, you've, you've made it impossible, basically. Number eight to bring it home, and we really cover this a lot, it's about the work. Oh, that, that's, yeah. If they've listened to this before, they've already heard Focus enough about that from me. Well, that's what we yeah. just said. You yeah. said it. Why would you prevent harm from surviving? Be nice. Yeah, that's it. That's it's the, the work. work. That's, that's what work. we're there for. That's why, the, the, that's why the public throws rose petals at us as we drive by, is the work we do. It, it's... It, that's the best thing ever. That's I mean, why they bring us cakes with uh, toenails and hair. We in it. don't need an OnlyFans page. Yeah. They're bringing it to the station now. That's right. I mean, That's it's, right. it's, yeah. And you know, the only ones that can screw that up is us. Yes. Is when we ignore the work and what we're supposed to do. Keeping our word. I showed up to do this. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Simple stuff like if you put together a budget. And it's not focusing on the work. If it's focusing on something completely different and then the work has to change to fit the budget or the training schedule has to change to fit something other than the work. We we went through that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything focuses on the work. If your training's focusing on the work, your organization's focusing on the work, the, the leaders know the work. When you do that, it, it narrows the space between those three levels, almost to the point they become too close, because that's the way I saw myself. Is I was just like a firefighter riding backwards or the company officer in the front. I had a similar role. So I dressed the same. I acted the same. I just had to do a certain, I had to stay in my lane and do what my job description was. If you focus on, if everybody focuses on the work, it's a, it's a car that it has a great oh, yeah, alignment. Yeah, man. You do not get the clown sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Even Mario Plum. Right? Yeah, ooh, yeah. no. Yeah. See, not with the fighters. <laughs> See, do not a, get the fighters involved. So once again, I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I need uh, to get the out more. The most interesting I see in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jumping yeah, yeah. Cheney and yeah. Cleo. We might <laughs> have him in eventually. Okay, no, yeah, I love he'll that be back. Guy. He's, he's, he's too that. well dressed not yeah, to be. Yeah. I love that man. <laughs> All right, time with tactical truth, guys. We may as well, Vance. We've, right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah for, this one's for Gary Fleischer. <laughs> Tactical Truth from Alan Bertacini from the playing cards available at bshifter.com. And this is the three of clubs. If we miss the initial command window, we will never get that initial effectiveness opportunity back. In some incidents, if we lose the front end, we lose the whole event. I hate it when that happens. The first five minutes are worth the next five hours. Yeah. That's kind of where you, that comes you from. You can't change your mind in midair. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. And that's what happens if you don't capture the front end and you take off. You're in midair by the time that thing, and it's very difficult for people and programs and processes, whatever it is, to catch up. But on the fire ground, most importantly, well, man. We were talking about the, the old Mayday study today. And what was it? The first... Two companies, three companies to the scene is when most of the May Days were yeah. occurring. Yeah. Yeah. That's the front end. That yeah. That's the first five to ten minutes of that incident operation. A lot of times before the, the strategic position I seize there, 
So you have got to make hay with a mobile IC doing what they're supposed to do strategically to keep that operation safe and effective. Have you ever gotten your car in your house and pulled onto the street and then said, hey, where are we going? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's freaking stupid. You can't do that. Yeah. And that's the IC on the front end. You got to look at, you got to go through that decision making model and you got to make you got to make your incident action plan and you move forward and share that with everybody and move that forward. investment in the front end takes a minute maybe and it will reduce the uh length and scope of that operation by i don't know 20 30 percent at least and in some cases it'll save your life so i mean you, you'll get more done in a shorter time with less resources if you figure out what's going on before you take action. And if you don't have a plan on the front end, how do you know when it's appropriate to change your plan? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. When, well, it's, when it's too late because you're changing it to a far, yeah. far to rescue operation. Well, and they, I mean, and, and that's the thing is they talk about, okay, safety, safety. And you're like, no, safety for firefighters is no different than safety for uh, skydivers or scuba divers. Is there if you reach a point and think, oh, I should have done this differently. Well, OK, I'm dead now. Yeah. So it's like, oops, I should have packed a shoot. Di-. Now, you got one shot a lot of times. So the same thing's true of us it, it is we have to make sure we're doing the right set of things just for our own self-preservation to begin with. And, and then, it's a, well, I'm there to save lives. Well, if it's killing you, what do you think's happened 20 minutes ago to any unprotected person inside? We're there to, yeah. You can't save anybody when you kill yourself. And the so, good news is all the information is there. Look ahead. Yeah. Use that decision-making model. Look up. Use the decision-making model because all the information. Now, there's some unknowns, but the unknowns we know the unknowns. They're known mm-hmm. unknowns, right? And we'll mm-hmm. get that information later. But you know what you, you know enough to take effective action to get you to the next phase. And that effective action is going to make it safer for everybody, the firefighters and any victims that are there. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind that's, of. That's the whole thing with Buka. I think that's yeah. why it, it's most successful because you're not arriving on the scene with blindfolds. Well, it, yeah, it works. It's just it's common sense and it's the, the best you apply the best standard actions to set of conditions to get an outcome. I mean, that's what the whole thing's about. So I love three of clubs. That's a great tactical tool. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just starting out uh, in boxing, maybe you don't take on the heavyweight champion right off the bat. Mm-hmm. That's probably not going to be the best use of your time. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be there very long. No, you're not. And you're not going to learn anything other than what it's like to be knocked unconscious. <laughs> and you can learn that any number of ways that uh, it's probably easier. Well, happy Thanksgiving, guys. Oh, yeah. Enjoy oh, yeah. Thanksgiving. I'm That's looking it. forward to pumpkin pie. Yeah. Yeah. What's the Brunacini's uh, serving this year? I don't know. I think we're all kind of splitting up this year. Oh, really? Yeah. They're, they're, some are going to friend's house. Some are going over there. I don't know. My wife and I will be doing it. Uh, if I have my way, there will be beef. Oh, probably yeah. more than uh, fowl. Yeah, I would go beef. Yeah. My wife loves her favorite holiday is Thanksgiving, and she does the cooking all day long, and the house smells great, and I watch TV and drink beer, and it's one of the best things that could happen. Mm-hmm. She loves doing all that and bringing the family together. she get her feelings hurt if they didn't show up. And everybody goes home stuffed and full. And Ours is more Christmas. Yeah. Yes. So... Well, have a happy Thanksgiving. What are you going to do, Vance? Uh, Chinese spare ribs or beef. Okay. Uh, Those two things. I'm sick of turkey. I don't care. So what's a Chinese spare rib? You know, like you get at the Chinese restaurant. It's the spare rib, but it's got some different seasoning on it. By spices. Yeah, we were just talking about doing something different. I thought that was some sort of animal. Right on. <laughs> no, it's not. You know, the other night we had chili dogs. We had everybody oh. over and we had chili dogs. And then I took the leftovers to Vance yeah. the next oh. day and we feasted on them. The chili dogs were good. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much for being here. God bless you, Vance. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone, for listening to V Shifter. And you have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.